Hello, we will welcome This is Ali Nissen. I'm joined again by Dr. Emmanuel Alvaro, our World Endo faculty. And uh, um, we're sitting here in the lecture room. Now we have to change menu, uh, venue, uh, Manny, because we were interrupted up in the other lecture room. Um, Dr. Alvaro, uh, Manny was giving us, uh, gave us here at the program, we're sitting here at the Harvard Dental School in a lecture hall, gave us an all morning presentation, beautiful mm -hmm. cases on uh, different types of endodontic pediatric um, relationship and things like that that he did and I wanted to share some of those cases with you and Manny is, uh, is going to be kind enough to share about three more cases here with us uh, this afternoon of the cases that he showed uh, today. So Manny, first and foremost, again, thanks for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. This is going to be really pleasure. educational for uh, uh, all of us as well as our viewers. So why don't we get str straight to it and uh, share the first case, uh, the, rather the second case uh, that you have here for us. So what we have here is a 16-year-old is a, a young girl who had a trauma three months prior and presented with some swelling over her tooth number eight or tooth number 11 in Canada. Um, so and she was leaving for Florida mm -hmm. three, four days afterwards, so needed some immediate attention. So judging from the radiograph, we have a right, large radi epical radiolucency. You have underdeveloped root formation, which tells us that the trauma happened many years yes. ago. I don't right? think the three months ago caused this. This, this exactly. was probably a wake up from uh, this, well, she had a motor vehicle accident three months prior to me seeing her, and prior to this radiograph, and I'm sure she had some sort of prior trauma right. when she was maybe the age of seven or eight. Yeah, I mean, that looks Good. like a root formation arrested at about seven years of age. And I can mm -hmm. also see on the radiograph, uh, Manny, a certain formation at the apical area of the tooth. Do you know what that is? Was well, that, that's what's particular about this case. Usually, you see an open apex, mm -hmm and uh, no calcification. In this case, it's almost apexified, apexified through necrotic yeah. tissue. Th this, is th this is the reason why I wanted to share with the residents today, and uh, something that we don't see very often. So there is almost like a natural apical barrier that has been formed, an osteoid barrier. This is when we do an apexification, it's what we try to do. Here in this tooth, it looks like the coronal area is intact, so there was not a previous attempt to do apexification. So this is somehow a very interestingly, uh, abnormally developed osteoid barrier in a necrotic tooth as mm -hmm. the body's own response to pulpal necrosis. It may have been a sterile pulpal necrosis at that time That's at seven correct. years of age, so the body tried to develop mm -hmm. a barrier, and perhaps and this, in the more recent yes. uh, trauma, it became infected following the additional, the second time trauma to the tooth. Okay. So, very interesting case. Uh, how did you manage it? Well, first we have to address the immediate problem. She's swollen, pain, and they're leaving on vacation three, four days later. So what we did, what I did, was a calcium hydroxide palpectomy and uh, placed a temporary permanent restoration, almost not a permanent restoration, but something like a glass ionomer, so that she can have go through vacation go and not trip. risk losing the temporary restoration exactly. and reinfect the inside. Uh, prior to, to that, however, it looks like you took a CBCT as well, right? That's so correct. you took a CBCT of the tooth, and it looks like from the CT that the whole buccal uh, bone is gone. The bone is gone. There's a lot of, there's a big lesion. We, we see the loss of density throughout and no buccal bone. Uh, the large canal space and uh, the calcification. The calcification that covers the whole apex except for a few spots as we can see here. There's a few areas that are open. Right. So that's the particularity of this case. Now, Manny, uh, 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 I'll tell you, I've seen cases that have been referred to me for second opinion where patients have been told because the buccal bone is gone that they have to extract the tooth yes, and yes. that there is no way to save the tooth. And that to me is just, it's a lack of understanding for the causes of bone loss following endodontic infections and the potential for the bone to come back after proper treatment. And even with a 16-year-old, uh, removing the tooth right yeah, now... You can't get an implant that, anyway. Exactly. And then, so even if the tooth has a poor prognosis, your goal is to try to, to keep it, keep it as long until as they're like 22 years old or so. Or even get, older, as yeah. long as possible. Yeah. Trying to keep it there as long So as what did you do? You went in there. It looks like you used large instruments to clean the canal. At her return from her vacation, I, uh, no symptoms, no swelling, no pain to palpation, totally asymptomatic. I went in, cleaned passive cleaning with mm -hmm. large files because here there's not much to shape because the uh, 
the, the, the structure is already thin, all the dental structure, so you don't want to remove too much tooth structure, but you want to remove the bacteria that's within the canal. So what I did, I and, we noticed some areas that are yeah. open, right. that have patency, and little areas that have no, most of the area, the surface has no patency because it's totally calcified. And then I placed a bioceramic putty inside and sealed it with a bioceramic putty. And you notice here that we have also a plugger space. Yeah. Okay. A little, with uh, a putty. Pl plugger instead of, instead track. Of using gutter percha, I used. Yeah, plugger track. You okay. filled the entire root pretty much with the yes. putty and then, uh, yeah. Because you have to understand that yeah. the root is short as well. Right. Mobility, normal. Totally normal. It was just slightly more mobile prior at the time of the emergency when there was mm -hmm. an, uh, the active infection. Right. So, by the way, one other thing I wanted to say about the uh, the use of calcium hydroxide in this case is that, you know, in cases like this where you already have a thin root and you don't want to do much instrumentation, so you want, as you mentioned, you want to do minimal instrumentation, remove the least amount of dentin possible, but yet you still have to disinfect it too. So that's where the calcium hydroxide comes handy, where you cannot do a lot of clinical shaping, you end up relying on disinfection with the um, with calcium hydroxide. I use uh, I use a real calcium hydroxide, the salt that comes from the bottle, and then I mix it either with, with water, or saline, exodine or, or saline. Yeah. And uh, for us, that's what I believe yeah. helps. Yeah, it makes you sense in a case like some this. Some sort of intra canal medicament is probably recommended at this yeah. stage. Absolutely. So you filled the whole root up with the uh, biceramic putty fast set, and then on top of that, you put a layer of glassy onomer. Glassy onomer. Right. And then the uh, general dentist restored the tooth with a composite. With a composite. So that's it. And, and that's, we, have a, we have a follow. We have a 14-month yeah. follow-up, which was taken this fall, wow. September 2017. And we surprise, surprise, all that the, bone is back. Yeah, then, then what I did, I also took a CBCT at 14 months. And we know it's at 14 months. Wow. We have, All that you know, buckle plate has come back. Right. Buckle plate came back, and we're, we have at least 80% of the reattachment back. Right. So following back, we're going to follow up again in two years. That's terrific. So I think you managed this, this uh, case really beautifully, uh, Manny, in terms of not removing any excessive amount of additional dentin, yet still disinfecting by doing it in two visits and doing the calcium hydroxide therapy. The understanding of the presence of an osteoid barrier in this tooth that was originally necrotic is really interesting about this mm -hmm. case. And furthermore, I think what's interesting we learn is that bone can come back once the source of the problem, which is bacteria inside the root canal, has been addressed. You get healing. It's just, you get healing. The body is capable of healing itself. Yeah. We just remove the source. So that's terrific. Well, Manny, this is a great case. Let's uh, come back and share another case here with our audience. Thank you.